Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I HD my own eyebrows. Well, don't forget to subscribe. I'm only making this video because I want to show you exactly what the HD brow process is because I get a lot of questions asking what HD brows is and why it's so special. I'm hoping you seeing the transformation from this video will make you understand why they are. I just want to put a disclaimer out there. I do not recommend anyone shaping your eyebrows yourself, ever. It's just not a good idea. You're better off leaving it to us professionals. I know that's not what you want to hear right now because you want to be able to shape your eyebrows perfectly at home. But frankly, leave it to the professionals. Use this as a time to grow your eyebrows to the thickest they've ever been so that when you can get your HD brows done, you'll get the best results possible. So first things first, your HD brow stylist will sanitize their hands. I would normally then apply some gloves, but as I'm doing my own eyebrows, I'm not gonna do this today. So I'm gonna first of all, clean the brow area. So please ignore the fact that I have very red and pale skin underneath this makeup. So I will cleanse all the way around the brow. So I wouldn't advise wearing much makeup to your appointment like I am right now, but I just thought it's like a good for YouTube. It's the only thing I can look good for these days. So the question I'm often asked is why are HD brows different to normal shaping? So the main things I would say is the time that is allowed for the appointment is a lot longer. So the finish is always gonna be a lot more precise and more bespoke to you. Secondly, HG Brows includes threading as well as waxing. So you're not just gonna have all those hairs underneath taken away. You're gonna have every hair around your brow taken away so that you get the most flawless brow finish. And then lastly, I wouldn't even say lastly, because there's so many things I could say about HD brows and how much better it is. The tint is so long lasting, it's amazing. So a normal tint tends to last about two weeks, if that. The HD brows one should last you about four to six weeks if you look after them accordingly. So for my brows, I like them really dark to match my roots, which need doing a lot. So I like to mix dark brown and black to create my ideal brow color. So another thing that makes HD so fantastic is the color is blended to perfection. We don't just use a one size fits all, we have loads of different colors and we mix them to make the perfect color that will suit you. And now I'm applying the tint, making sure I cover all the hairs. So a few questions I am often asked about HD brows, how long do they take? HD brows takes from 45 minutes to an hour. Occasionally it can be done in half an hour, but that's a usual time. So another thing that makes HD brows different to other brow treatments is instead of just shaping the brow that you have, we are trying to create the perfect brow for you or improve the brows that you do have. So as you can see, I've kind of applied the tint to the shape a little bit around the shape. The reason I'm able to do this, even though I'm using a black, is that the HD Brows tint doesn't really stain quite as much as other tints. So you can you could just tint your whole forehead if you wanted to, see what hairs you can get, but I don't really feel the need to do that. And I kind of leave this on for a couple of minutes. I wouldn't say there's a, t a set time frame for this, it's just kind of, I have to keep checking it, see how it looks. And then I will dry wipe it, so it should continue to develop as I do the waxing, and I will then map out my brow shape. So I'm just dry wiping the color off now. This will allow the colour to continue developing as you're waxing the brows. However, if I had a client whose brows were the right colour already, I would use the vanish to prevent it from developing any further. So, a top tip when you're having your HD brows done, do not fake tan or use any tinted moisturisers, i.e. the ones that make you like, get a tan. Um, don't use those for three days leading up to your appointment and don't use them for three days afterwards because it will make the dye go kind of greeny and it will stain as well. So I then will look at my client's brows and measure out the points on their brows where I want them to be. I will then join those and then wax. Thank you. 
So another thing that sets HD apart from the rest of the brow treatments in the market is its wax sticks. So they're really fine and we use like a little hoof to apply it. This creates more of a precise finish and it's really hard to do your own eyebrows because normally when I'm putting the wax on I'd be stretching my skin but obviously I can't do that. I don't have enough hands so... So a bit of information for you now. If you've ever had your brows waxed and a layer of skin has come off or you've come out with a scab, a lot of people assume they've been burnt by the wax. But quite often it is actually where well, your skin is so sensitive that an extra layer of skin has come off. So it's called the term lifting and it is quite common. It's very common for anyone using anti-aging creams. So might as well on the HD Brows form it does say what anti-aging creams do you use. Anything with retinol generally is more likely to cause your skin to become sensitive and lift. Any Environ products can also do this. So if anyone ever says they are using Environ products, I will always check which level they're on and I will also use a barrier. So to use a barrier, you would basically apply a thin layer of oil first before waxing and then some powder on top. And this would basically form a second skin so that no skin itself lifts. If someone continued to lift after I used barrier, I probably would not recommend continuing waxing. So if you ever go on waxing, I don't know if doctors tell you, but they should. You should never have waxing done in any area of the body because you're going to be so sensitive to waxing. For my clients who are on Rakuten, it doesn't mean they can't have the HD brows treatment, it just means they can't have the waxing part, so I would just tweeze and thread instead of waxing. I have to say, in this quarantine period, I've seen some shocking beauty mishaps. I've seen people laminating their own eyebrows with a lash lift kit. Why would you risk damaging the eyebrows? So, leave it to professionals, trust me. So then I just use some oil to remove the wax residue. So it's been tidy up and then I will be back to do a bit of threading and tweezing and makeup. So I'm now using my own personal brow tech pencil to brush my brows up. I would normally use a disposable spoolie to do this, but obviously I'm doing my own brows, so. So now I'm gonna attempt to thread my own brows. This is something but I can't really do because you need to stretch and thread. So I don't have four hands, I have two. So I'll be, probably be able to thread the top of my brow because I don't have too much loose skin there, but I don't think I'll be able to do the underneath. I'll just have to tweeze there. In your normal HD brow treatment, you'll have the entire brow threaded, top and eyelid, and this is gonna get any of the hairs that the wax missed. So why is threading such a crucial step in having your brows done? So by having your eyebrows threaded as well as waxed, when you have a wax you may notice you get that kind of line here where the makeup doesn't really sit for a couple of days and you get like a line where your foundation kind of sits and then doesn't sit. The reason for this is because there's no hairs here and there's suddenly those little fine hairs above it. So by threading, we're kind of blending that so that there's no kind of straight line. And this is gonna make your makeup sit so much nicer. It's just like the best thing ever. So I'm just gonna try and thread the other side. It's really difficult to do this because I should be threading away from the hairs and I'm obviously threading in the same direction as them. So it doesn't really take as many off, but it'll do something hopefully. And then I'm gonna do some tweezing. With HD, we'd rather take less with the waxing and the threading and leave that to the tweezing to make sure we don't go too far. So I'm just trying to give myself an arch back because my eyebrows have become a bit too overgrown that I literally 
They look flat. So I'm then gonna use some of the stain remover just to see how the brows are looking and they are looking so much better, wow. So the reason the HD brow treatment is 45 minutes long is one hair can make or break the brow. So quite often when I'm tweezing the brows I do like to draw that shape that I did earlier before I did the waxing just to give me that brief outline for where I want my brows to be especially on myself I find it really difficult to visualise exactly where the brows should be and make them extremely even without doing this. So I'm happy with the shape I've done now so the last step of HD brows is a little bit of makeup. So once again for makeup I would normally use a disposable mascara wand and put some of this product on it but I am doing it with my own products so I am applying this directly to my brow. This is the HD brows colour fix. This adds a little bit more colour to the hairs which basically will just make them appear a bit thicker and obviously add a bit more colour but they don't really need more colour, they just need it to look thicker. The HG Brows do sell a really good serum, which I really need to start trying actually. Might start tonight. Which is the HG Brow Brow Maximizer. And this encourages the hairs to grow a bit thicker. So I don't trim my brows because I like that fluffy brow look and I feel like mine aren't that long. So if I trimmed them, I wouldn't be able to get that fluffy look. So whenever I'm doing the HD Brows treatment I love to use the Pro Pencil because it mimics hairs and creates a realistic brow look. I'm going to use this to fill in the front of my brow. And arch a little bit. So now I am just concealing any redness using the HG Brows Brow Highlighter. I like to apply it to the back of my hand, warm it up and then put it on a brush as I find the product comes out better that way. So there's the finished final result so you can see beautiful fuller shaped brows that suit my face and my hair and my skin tone if you have any other questions about hd brows please leave them below and i'll do my best to answer every single one of them if you have any other ideas or videos you'd like to see from me just let me know and don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching